The 2023 NFL season is finally upon us, which means I finally get to do my week one predictions. Let's get this video rolling. Real quick, just want to give a huge shout out to SeatGeek for sponsoring this video. With live events happening every single day and SeatGeek being the number one ticketing app available to users, SeatGeek has got you covered on anything you could possibly want to go to. Whether you're a football fan, a soccer fan, or you just like to go to live concerts, SeatGeek will hook you up with the best prices available. And right now, SeatGeek's offering $20 off your first purchase when you use my promo code 2GOLD. I've left the link at the top of the description for you to download the SeatGeek app using my promo code to get $20 off your first purchase. That's promo code 2GOLD to get $20 off your first purchase on SeatGeek. And thank you so much to SeatGeek for sponsoring this video. First game is Thursday Night Football Lions Chiefs. They got the line at minus four and a half for the Chiefs. This is going to be a close game. This is going to be a closer game than a lot of people expect because the Lions have a lot to prove here. Their offense is going to be firing on all cylinders. I'm still going to go with the Chiefs here. I still think they got the better team overall, but I would not be shocked at all if the Lions came out with a dub here, or even if this game was just super close, came down to the wire. Next up, we got the Titans versus the Saints. They got the line at minus three for New Orleans. Again, another super close game. It's going to be a very defensive sided game. Titans defensive line is going to absolutely wreck the Saints O line, especially since there's key injuries to that left side of the line, as well as just big question marks to the left side of that line with Jeffrey Simmons just pounding and pounding and pounding away. The run game is definitely going to be kind of a struggle for them. I still think the Saints are going to come out with a dub here. Saints playing at home week one. Derek Carr looking fantastic in the preseason. Saints look very efficient on the offensive side of the ball. They're definitely going to be able to air it out against this Titans secondary. The Saints are going to have more of a day when it comes to passing the ball compared to the Titans where you know their game plan. They're going to run it with Derrick Henry and the Saints are not going to let that happen easily with Brian Brzee. Arguably the best run stopper coming out the draft. It's going to be fun to watch for sure. Next up, we got the Panthers versus the Falcons. They got the Falcons at minus three and a half here. I'm actually going to take the Panthers, however, though. Falcons are playing at home. You got to like the Falcons defense that they built in the offseason here and Bijan Robinson's going to be able to run the entire game out. But at the same time, I just think the Panthers have a way better built team. I think Bryce Young is going to come out. He's going to have some struggles in his opener for sure, like most rookies do. But at the end of the day, Bryce Young was drafted number one overall for a reason. An incredible player, super talented, super athletic. Panthers offensive line is going to be able to allow him to do what he wants to do as well. Like that Panthers offensive line is severely underrated. The Falcons are not going to be able to do what they want to do in the past game because they have Jeremy Chin, who's also a pretty heavy hitter in the run support. JC Horn, sick corner one who's going to be able to lock up Drake London for them on top of the fact that you got Brian Burns Derek Brown brushing the football like it's going to be a pretty sick defense and I think they're going to be able to come out and prove something week one to us plus anything in the, in the NFC South can happen realistically speaking it doesn't really matter who you pick in the NFC South because at the end of the day it's the NFC South you know what I'm saying next up is the Bengals versus the Browns with the line at minus two for Cincinnati yeah the Browns are eight and two versus the Bengals and haven't lost a home game since 2018 to the Bengals so because of that I still think I'm going to take the Browns here week one. It's crazy because the Bengals, I think, are the better team, right? They're the I think they're the better built team overall. They got Joe Burrow. They got that elite offense. If this Browns defense comes out and just absolutely stuffs the run and forces them to pass on third and longs for a majority of this game, the Bengals could very easily struggle because that's where they struggled the most last season was on third and long. And that's where the Browns can take advantage of the Bengals is with the poor offense not running on all the cylinders it needs to be running on because because the Bengals defense is definitely going to struggle against Nick Chubb. Next is the Jaguars versus the Colts. This is pretty self-explanatory. It's going to be the Jaguars dub here. It's going to be a snooze fest. Yeah, the Colts are at home, but Colts are in shambles. Jonathan Taylor's not playing. Huge question mark at running back. Anthony Richardson is super raw, and you still got to develop him. Don't know how he's going to come out and perform in week one. Jaguars just got the way better team. And we got the Bucks versus the Vikings. Minus five and a half for Minnesota here. This game is extremely intriguing to me because a lot of people are going to think, yeah, the Vikings are going to come out and wipe the floor with the Bucks, but there is a very real chance, especially in week one, that the Buccaneers could definitely come out and light up the air on Minnesota. Still have a horrible secondary. Bucks wide receivers are still very good, and a lot of people keep forgetting that, I guess. It is Baker Mayfield throwing to them, but there is a real chance that Baker Mayfield could come out and light up the Vikings secondary. I'm going to take the safe bet and still go with the Vikings just because I can't see the Bucks defense being able to stop Justin Jefferson at all, and if you can't stop Justin 
Justin Jefferson, then there's no way that the Vikings lose this game. I would not be shocked if the Bucs make it a close game or even they come out and win the game. Next, we got the 49ers versus Steelers. I'm actually going to take the Steelers here. Line is minus two and a half for the 49ers. I would really like the Steelers odds here. Brock Purdy is not going to know what's coming at him when TJ Watt is rushing him with the football. Top that off with one of the best interior defensive linemen in the league still at Cameron Hayward, Alex Highsmith off the ball, and the elite secondary they have. I don't know if Brock Purdy is going to be able to handle all that, especially coming off the worst injury a quarterback could have. Yes, I know that they're saying that the injury doesn't matter and that he's playing great in training camp or whatever. It's still going to affect. And then also, you know, don't sleep on this Steelers offense. The Steelers offense is actually coming together nicely. Now, granted, I think it still might need another year for it to fully represent itself because their offensive line still has big holes especially in the interior Kenny Pickett has been looking great in preseason doing amazing at training camp yes Nick Bosa is going to be a threat to the Steelers for sure he's definitely going to tear up that offensive line still but at the end of the day I think it's going to be the quarterback inexperience here and I think Brock Purdy is definitely going to struggle. Cardinals versus Commanders. I'm not going to talk about this for long at all. It's Commanders free low. They got the line at minus seven and it should be like minus 20 maybe. Over exaggeration, of course. But I mean, come on. The Cardinals suck as a team, as a football team. They're playing for the number one overall pick. Commanders are going to wipe the floor with them and they're at home so texans versus ravens another pretty self-explanatory one ravens at home Packers versus bears this game is another super interesting one it honestly could be a toss-up bears at home justin fields hoping to come in and prove what he's worth dj moore being a wide receiver one for them is really good in the fact that it helps their offense out tremendously but i'm gonna take the packers here They've got the better defense by a mile. I think that they're going to be able to shut down what the Bears want to come out and do, which is pound the rock, pound the rock, pound the rock, and then occasionally go trips left or trips right with DJ Moore. Jair Alexander's just going to shut that all down for sure. Packers offense is really not as bad as people think it is. It just comes down to how good Jordan Love's going to play. And against the Bears defense, he's going to have a great week one, and it's going to have people talking for sure like, oh, Jordan Love's the guy, because he could definitely ball out against one of the weaker defenses in the league in the Bears. I mean, the Bears don't have much going defensively. Raiders versus Broncos. I'm going to go Broncos here. Broncos are playing at home. It's a tough stadium to play at. Russell Wilson just got a flame lit under him. Sean Payton's chewing him out. Plus, I just think the Broncos have the better built team. Obviously, it's two mid teams playing here for sure. You got to like the Broncos offense a lot more than the Raiders defense. Eagles versus Patriots this should be a no-brainer taking the Eagles here even though the Eagles are the infinitely better team here it's they're still playing in Gillette Stadium it's gonna be tough to take a dub over here in Foxborough it always has been but I don't think it matters Eagles roster is just way better next up we got the Dolphins versus the Chargers I've been seeing a lot of people pick the Dolphins to win this game but I'm gonna go with the Chargers here Dolphins don't have Jalen Ramsey and that's a big issue for the Dolphins especially playing against the Chargers who have Keenan Allen Mike Williams and Mike Williams V2, aka Quentin Johnson. And with Justin Herbert, they're gonna air it out. And that's gonna be a huge problem for the Dolphins because I don't know if their secondary is gonna be able to keep up. Next up is the Rams versus the Seahawks. Self-explanatory here. Seahawks are the better built team. They're playing at home. The Rams have nothing going for them offensively. Should be a free win for the Seahawks. And you got Sunday night football, Cowboys versus Giants. This game could end up being really fun to watch that being said i'm gonna take the cowboys here last time the giants beat the cowboys with dak prescott was when barack obama was president and i think that still stands the giants just don't have a good enough team to compete with the cowboys in my opinion still their defense is infinitely better than the giants defense their offense is infinitely better than the Giants offense. The Giants are going to struggle to do what they want to do, especially against the new and improved Cowboys defensive line. But again, I think it still could be a close game because Brian Dable, you know, he's going to work a match. He's going to work a magical scene. He always does. And then finally, an incredible Monday night football game here with the Bills versus the Jets. I'm actually going to take the Jets for the win here week one. No Von Miller for the Bills. The pass rush is not going to be there for the Bills. And against a struggling offensive line that still has question marks, for the Jets that's just the type of advantage they need to win a game like this against a big team like this so that Aaron Rodgers can come out and just absolutely dominate the football game like he intends to do sauce is going to give Diggs a really hard time and we'll end up seeing how it goes but I think the Jets are very capable of coming out and winning week one I, I got them to win especially they're playing at home too I got them winning week one if you like this video be sure to like comment and subscribe and I'll catch you all on the next one peace